Hello and welcome to another edition of RazorWire. This is James Rees and today we're doing a spotlight on technology for GRC, uh, GRC tools, the need for GRC, everything related to GRC we are going to be talking about today. I have the fantastic Megan Brown from Logic Gate here. She's the head of international sales there. Megan, do you want to just kind of give yourself a brief introduction to the people who are watching today? I'd be happy to. Thank you, James, for having us today. It is a pleasure to join you. So my name is Megan Brown, have it international here. I've been with the Logigate team. This is my fifth year. I've spent most of my career in, in software and, and technology. And Logigate is a global workflow automation platform designed to meet the needs and operationalize and and provide value within the GRC space. So I know we're going to unpack that today and talk about the history of it, but it's really great to be on this um, with you today. I was telling James earlier, I also am a host of a podcast in GRC, and so it's really fun to be on this side of it and having a dialogue. So excited for our conversation today. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so the murky world of GRC, you know, um, as a lot of you out there will know, I've been around in this game now for about 25 years before GRC was even really a thing, um, you know, and we've seen a very interesting migration from like everybody using Word documents, Excel files, even access databases back in the day, you know, to manage your risks, to sort out your information security, to keep your data in one place so you could sort of refer back to it. Um, and nowadays, we have seen the rise of proper GRC tools. They have been around for a little while, but go. let's, let's rewind the world back to a, an earlier, a simpler time. <laughs> uh, you know, a, a young me, young in my career, and, and I thought, wouldn't it be good to go out and find some kind of tool where I can I could log things like risks and assets and, you know, so I could prove my return on investment to my powers that be who... Let's face it, back in that time period, so let's go 20 years back, uh, security didn't really have a budget most of the time. Um, you know, as I like to term it, five pounds and a pickled egg, and, and that was pretty much what you got. Uh, yeah, very different space now. But um, out back then, there was only really two, yeah, two GRC tools on the market. I remember going and having a look at them. I thought, oh, they're, they're nice and complex and, and very difficult to use, like all things were back in the day. Uh, and then I asked how much they cost. Uh, after I picked myself up off the floor uh, from passing out, um, I realized that maybe GRC tools were a little bit out of my reach, or, or at least out of the reach of the company I was working for at the time. And they were quite a decent-sized company. So... Megan, I mean, GRC, it's, it's been a, a bit of a love-hate story for a lot of us InfoSec people for a long time. You know, the costs for a long, long time were very prohibitive. Um, and bearing in mind, this is the time well before um, virtualization, you know, everything was on-prem. So even mm. if you did manage to get a GRC tool, you were still paying out for a license for a, for a hefty, expensive database um, which obviously you had to have people who could manage as well, you know, mm -hmm. comparatively now it's very different, but I mean, you know, way, way back. I mean, how long have you been, been involved in GRC on this space? Is it, have you seen a really interesting transition or has it just been, uh, you know, business as usual for you? Oh no, you, you really called it out. Well, I think it's interesting. I think, cause it is, it is almost 20 years, almost to the year that we saw socks really hit the scene, which allowed visibility and attention to financial reporting controls. And I think mm. that's where the market started, you know, and, and these legacy platform technologies started to create solutions to speak to that. And, you know, professionals in IT have been doing this type of work long before there was that term GRC, mm. you know, this is something not new to the folks listening to this call. You've been doing it for a long time. Um, but 20 years ago came these monolithic legacy platforms to your point, heavy code based on-prem high um, cost to maintain and deploy and ultimately still would cause silos within businesses and not be as holistic uh, as the need was. And so we've seen that. We've seen folks who maybe had previous experience with that in the past, or maybe 
like my daughter and I talk about all the time, my daughter and I say about her mates at school, I said, everyone's on a learning journey. And like (laughs) many of us in GRC are on this kind of maturity journey. And so I think, you know, in the last, oh gosh, we talked about this, James, like even the last year, we've seen so much happen in the market and the landscape and globally that have made us all think about, okay, where are we on that journey for this holistic GRC maturity? And, and, you know, for those of us that have stuck to the spreadsheets and Excel and, um, you know, databases and things like that, I think we're seeing in the market, a lot of people say, you know what, I think now is the time to think about how do we really digitize this, operationalize this. We're all doing more with less. I know we'll talk about that in a minute, but Mm. we're in a remote world. We're, We're strapped to do more with less. How do we just make our teams more effective? But more importantly, how do we start to mature our programs and secure our our organizations and transform um, the trajectory of where we want to go as a business. And so, yes, I've seen this evolve. Now, of course, I haven't been in this space for the full 20 years. I've really came into the scene about five years ago. And actually the the founder's story of Logigate is they have been in this space for the last 20 years and they were 20 years ago doing consulting and they were Mm -hmm. working with JP Morgan and um, Bank of America. And they were using those legacy tools to help to give their clients advice and guidance, but they're also building bespoke applications and using Excel to build, you know, what is now known as GRC. And it was through that experience and kind of cobbling things together, working with legacy technology that fast forward the tape, the the three founders of Logigate came together, they looked at themselves and it was someone from the product side, it was someone from the customer side, and it was a, a business leader. And they all came together and said, let's build something that's what we call fit for purpose, fit mm. for purpose, agile, easy to use. And the, the early days, the, the mission that drove them was we want to digitally empower our users to own this and use this. The, the people that are using GRC technology, they know what they need more than we as technology need, you know, technologists need. It, it's about how do we wrap around the challenges that our customers have and not have them have to fit into a rigid technology. And so that's what drove them is they said, you know, let's create something that is flexible and dynamic and wraps around what they're doing today. Keep the good and change what's not so good. And so that's what drives us still to this day, which is, you know, meeting customers on that journey of maturity, whether they've got defined processes and procedures and workflow and things like that, or they have, they're you're migrating off of Excel and they need mm. some guidance as far as what does happen when I send that risk assessment assessment to my team member, or, or how should we be thinking about control testing and, and documenting it and having consistency. So yes, I've seen this, you know, from, from the, from the lens of the founders, from their personal experience. And then myself, even the last five years, I've seen this pendulum swing from, you know, legacy monolithic, GRC solutions to point solutions to back to this kind of next gen GRC. And what does that mean? And eGRC. And I think everyone on this listening to this can think about where are they in that journey? Where do they have a little bit of um, maybe some battle wounds about some old tech in the past and kind of excited to learn about, you know, what is going on in, in the future of uh, this GRC space. So Absolutely. I mean, you bring up a, a good point. You know, the, the, the tools back in the day were very rigid. I mean, they were built for purpose. They were very complicated to use. Um, and getting any meaningful information out of them for the powers that be, because, you know, you were gathering information and you would know how to use these tools. Um, but actually getting some kind of output was was relatively difficult, especially output that these people would understand. There weren't InfoSec people. They'd never seen that that you know grc tool um and the functionality just wasn't there either you know it was uh, yes some came with ticketing system but they didn't tie in with anything else and you ended up with like you know the it ticketing system over there and your ticketing system over there and you'd have to recreate and rebuild what you were doing uh, when incidents came up or if you were tracking things you know into two areas as opposed to just one or one that would hook into other areas and now of course we're getting a lot of grc tools that hook into actual technology as well so they can pull informational feeds in to to gather alerts gather information you know and pre-populate some of the stuff that we need back Mm -hmm. then it was all kind of manual stuff you'd you'd look on the firewall you go right okay that's what's going on and then you go and report it on your grc tool and 
you know, another thing that you mentioned as well, the flexibility is very different nowadays because back then, you know, the mod they weren't modules, it was just one monolithic thing, you know. Yeah. And if you're you did your risk and manage your risk in a different way, your procedures, your processes in different from what was actually in there and baked in, then you were kind of screwed because you'd either use the GRC one or you'd still go back to your Excel database, uh, Excel database, your, your access database, or yeah, I'm that old access. Um, <laughs> and then your, or your Excel spreadsheets. And then you'd have to kind of convert it into whatever the GRC tool used okay. and the and the the type parameters that it had and and it just it was just it was just untenable. I mean, mm-hmm. you hear a lot of people say. I mean, again, you know, I was in technology before I was in infosec. That's uh, that that was even longer and further back. And back then, it was a very different world for technology. You know, as I said, everything was on prem. It was all a lot more complicated. There was no dashboards really to speak of. You know, you had to learn your command line, be it Linux, mm. be it. Um, you know, even for Windows, you know, most of us back then would would run commands like IP config or, you know, Netstat or whatever else, you know, to try and get some meaningful information out of things so we could then, you know, digest it and figure out what we were doing. Um, we're, we're working in a very different world. And I think, you know, back then also security was seen as part of IT. It was very mm. much siloed right there in the IT department. Occasionally you'd see it um, outside, maybe in the legal department, but that tended to happen a bit later. Now we're actually in a very, very different world where, you know, InfoSec, depart- you know, we have departments now of InfoSec people um, who they don't report to the CIO. They don't report to anybody else you know they're either on the board or they're advising the board um and there's arguments to say what which one is better but whatever way you're doing it you know one of the hardest things to do in the information security space is to prove your return on investment if you haven't had an event where you've experienced a horror how in the name of gods are you going to prove that you've protected a company from an event that would have caused cost is cost them a load of money. You can't do that. So with GRC tools and the flexibility that you get nowadays, if you're doing a risk management right and you are, yeah, you know, obviously you've still got to put in all the information. Nothing's perfect. You know, it won't do everything for you. Um, but you can you can start proving that return on investment. You get a lot better reporting now. You know, you get a lot better pie charts and you know ways of graphically showing how your risk landscape has changed and the cost to the company so the more you spend on security or the, or the better you spend in security should i say well you mentioned something interesting you know for yeah to the kind of the history lesson it, it often was in you know siloed into different departments or, or certain certain team members would have responsibilities of it and now i feel in the last couple years that the you know, strategic stakeholders, board level directives are interested to know. They mm. want to have a, a dialogue about the risk posture, the security posture of the organization and the impediment on strategic initiatives that they have or strategic operational goals that they have. And I see that the, even at the board level, they're now starting to be um, hungry or, or um seeking clarity and understanding about like risk and security postures within organizations and, and great. And then how do we answer to that? How do to your mm. point, like, how do you normalize the the language of risk? How do you normalize the language of security to folks at the board level who are not in this all day long and don't understand controls, um, who don't understand, you know, the day-to-day uh, threat landscape. Right. And so we're seeing that, like, how do we help to, um, to your point, create some connection across mm. these disparate processes and functions to ultimately give those executive leadership team members and board um, members awareness, clarity, transparency about what's going on, good and bad, but allow them to make strategic decisions based on the data. And you can only do that, I think, if you can, you know, get it all, you know, get it, organize it, right? Organize it and make it visible. And then put it in the terms of dollar and cents, which I think a lot of board members understand now. And so we're also seeing a shift in the, and that maturity of GRC to things like what IT has done, I think, well, to your point of trying to monetize in dollars and cents, 
the impact to an organization. And um, so we're starting to see that and we're, we're hearing it being called as risk quantification, which um, most of us have known that as, as we've been trying to build business cases, justifying team members and justifying tool sets and things like that. We're always thinking about how do we justify this and savings, but to your point, it's hard when there's never been an event, luckily, hopefully, yeah. you know, there hasn't been an event yet, a compelling event, uh, an incident, a breach, something like that, that, you know, lo- the, the board throws money at. So a lot of times it's folks who are proactive and want to get to that next level of maturity. And so how do you build that business case? Um, yeah, it's an interesting discussion. It's, it's interesting, actually, because, I mean, you know, even back when I was in IT, before I got into security, and whilst I was in security, you know, every now and then you would get somebody outside that field who would say, all you guys, all you guys and girls do is basically sit there and do, we just see you doing nothing, you know, tapping away a little bit, doing nothing. Definitely. And I've always turned around to people who've said that to me and said, look, you really want to see your IT people and your security people doing nothing. Because if they're running around looking a little bit concerned or very concerned with, you know, suddenly diving off to a data center or shouting at one another across the desk, it means something rather serious has happened. (laughs) Yes. So, you know, whilst they're all looking nice and calm, things are good, you know, um, and it shows that everything's working. Um, But but again, going back to, to, um, you know, GRC tools, uh, it's it's. I think what, what what we have now is we actually can build uh, a data set of how things have been going in our GRC tools to be able to more effectively show um, historical risk. So, mm-hmm. you know, when we talk about things like risk management, management one of the hardest things to, to really quantify or qualify um, is probability factors. Mm-hmm. Uh, impacts normally are pretty, I wouldn't say they're easy to establish, but depending upon the model you're using, I mean, I personally like a, a, a risk methodology called FAIR, um, yep. which yep. was born, born out of insurance, and they know a lot about risk since that's kind of really what they've been doing since the year dot. Yes. Um, and they, the way they work their probabilities is very, very different from a lot of the more traditional ways. You know, what is, you know, what I perceive as a probability factor, say 80% for me, maybe 30% for you. But um, now with GRC tools, we can actually track and use historical evidence of previous issues that the company has had. We can then, you know, associate those with assets. We can associate those with data assets, which we never did back in the day. And and, and funnily enough, it, it sprung to mind when you were just talking. I think that the, the, the difference in a lot of the way security has migrated and the way executives have seen in security is a far more important thing to, to look at than they had possibly did back in the day was they saw the, the value of digital assets, data, mm-hmm resources you know um uh, solutions that were available all the time and not going down every five minutes i mean again you know there have been companies i've i've consulted for who had applications who if it went down it would go down for a day and that was normal for them i was like oh yeah it's gone down for another day it's like yeah but your productivity has gone for a day right shouldn't you think about fixing this we can show you the historical risk through the grc tool how many days it's gone down we've done the average what it costs you it's going to cost you a hundred grand to fix it but when you actually look at how much it's cost you in business and revenue it's more like you know five million quid it's cost you in downtime so do you want to spend the lose the five million quid or do you want to spend the hundred grand mm-hmm. um and that is really where where that power for jersey comes in you right. know um well- and, it, and then it brings in, you know, cross-functional team members to understand that together, you know, before procurement goes and renews that contract, right? It's about a story of what did that, you know, partnership, that technology, that vendor, whatever it may be, what kinds of incidents have we had? What kind of issues have we had? What kind of downtime has it impacted mm-hmm. us? Um, it's all, it's all connected, right? It's all about how to efficiently um, be more productive and, and to scale, you know, and, and to, to um, meet the business needs and and mm. and not and talk you know talk to each other yeah be aware talking that. that's important right. um, communicating right. <laughs> but I mean this is it even more so I mean we were talking you know when we did the kind of uh, initial conversation about this this particular 
um, you know, spotlight on technology. Yeah. Um, the world has changed so dramatically in the last two years. I mean, you know, GRC was becoming important before this, before, yes. you know, dare I say it, COVID uh, for risk of getting ratioed or, or shadow banned. Um, you know, but even before COVID, people start to see some serious value in GRC. But but I think all of a sudden the the lockdowns and the fact that all of a sudden we're working from home, we can't really communicate efficiently and effectively you know, all the time over things like Teams. So we do need tools where we can feed data in from a multi multitude of different sources. It's like you're in Chicago, I'm in the UK. You know, my my working day is very different from yours. You know, you've probably only just had breakfast and your first coffee and you're just reading your first emails. I've been working for the last, oh, uh, you know, several hours already. Um, so, you know when I go to bed or when I go sort of home or I'm, I'm from the UK down the pub, um, you know, you need to pick up that information. So, okay. So what, what did Jim see, you know, when he was, has he been keeping an eye on this particular weird alert that's been coming mm -hmm. out? Yeah. What's in our instant response database on the module in the GRC? What, what you know, what's the, 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 you know, the rhetoric, what have we been monitoring? What are we looking for? Obviously there's always a handover anyway, you know, if, especially if there's a big event coming on, but again, this is the where GRC tools really, really help. Everyone's working from home. You know, everybody's working on different times. Um, the technology that we're using is drastically changing every single day and it's becoming more and more important to log that change through things like GRC because you just don't you don't have the ability to do that in the traditional excels and word spreadsheets because you've got to go hunting for that information with GRC it's like right okay so where are we with this you know mm -hmm. well and I I think that's so key what you were mentioning you know obviously the working environment has changed significantly over the last couple of years that, you know, traditional in office teams and cultures are now finding themselves fully remote. And how do you keep, we talked about this too, the other day, you know, some, some of us in risk and compliance are, are working towards this vision of driving risk awareness, right? Mm. Driving security awareness. And mm. we talk about it here at Logigate that risk is a team sport. It can't just be on the shoulders of our InfoSec team and our risk team. It needs to be all of us frontline business leaders. We should be mindful of what is a risk. How do we document risk, project lit risks, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you lose the ability, obviously in a remote world to just pop into a business leader's office and do a traditional, you know, risk assessment interview and kind of talk about what we see in the next quarter and what's going on and then talk through some remediation activities and all of that. You know, we lose that. We just don't have the bandwidth. We just don't have the face time. We just don't have mm -hmm. the hours in the day anymore. And so we need to make when we do those conversations as impactful as they can. And so what we're starting to see is folks are saying, well, let's leverage technology to let the business um, play more of a role in this, identify risks, provide their assessment information, let you know, risk leaders and compliance leaders and IT leaders review what the business has shared and then come to that meeting, come to that Zoom call with a plan and a strategy to actually get into the work, which is a remediation efforts. It's mm. less about what is a risk because they're able to now have the technology help the business understand, okay, I can real-time document this and I can, mm. I can share this with my um, business partner to say, hey, this is what I've identified on this project level. Look at it, to your point, look at it while I'm sleeping. <laughs> look at it while I'm sleeping, share with me some narrative notes, send it back in a secure way. And that's what we, we wanna keep that cross-functional dialogue going, um, especially when we're not able to just pop into someone's office and sit down for a couple hours to talk through it. So I'm seeing technology, if it can break down the silos and if it's an easy to use technology that will foster that kind of quality and quantity of data that goes into the system, then it allows some really nice, meaningful conversations when you do sit down to talk about risk and remediation and, and processes. But, um, but it is, it's a difficult world. And then also we talked about this too, you know, more and more businesses are finding more and more tech that helps them and enable them to do more with less and be more effective and efficient, which is great. But that increase that increases our, you know, third party and fourth party yeah. risks, right. Within the business. And so now more than ever, we're finding folks who, you know, maybe we're doing a vendor due diligence on an Excel spreadsheet and they're critical vendors. Now we're saying, no, we need to at least have a baseline assessment for all of our third parties and fourth yeah. parties. We need to have that 
Um, maybe it's my customers that demand it. Maybe it's my, um, business partners that demand it, whatever it may be, but I need to document that. And so anyway, so we're just starting to see more and more folks being mindful of that and just wanting to have some good baseline information on third parties and fourth parties that they work mm. with too, because more and more of us have an increasing tech stack within our organizations too. So. And this, this is a really good point. And there's another point and it's associated with another point you made earlier on, you know, Sarbanes-Oxley, you know, I remember when that, uh, you know, somebody had actually printed the damn thing out <laughs> and, and wandered over to my desk and I was working for a Japanese reinsurance company at the time. Uh, <laughs> And uh, they slammed that thing on my desk and I looked at it and I was just like, holy God, what am I going to do with this? You know, I could I could choke a donkey with this or I could bludgeon a, a rhino to death, you know, and I've got to fill this thing in. All you Americans, you love your forms. Um, but, um, you know, doing that and going through that process, right. you know, even on a digital format version of it was horrendous because... You know, there are certain compliance that has come out over the years. PCI DSS, I'm a QSA, you know, um, ISO 27001, uh, Lexel, if you're in kind of like the legal side in the UK, HIPAA, if you're in, you know, there's, there's a million, million, million of them. And there's a lot of correlation between them. Yeah. And GRC can track a lot of those. So you're not doubling up or trebling up on your work. If you've got a HIPAA requirement, you've got an ISO requirement, um, you've got a PCI requirement and dare I say a HIPAA requirement. A lot of these GRC tools now will actually track what you're doing. And as you're populating one, it's allowing you to populate all the others as well. So that when you're audited, you can actually basically, you're not redoing your work. You're saying, right, QSA, here's your bit. Yeah. ISO auditor, here's your bit and the timestamps and which requirements we've reviewed over our assessments and stuff. Yeah. Um, HIPAA, you know, here's what we're doing here. Lexel, here's what we're doing here. <coughs> and it's very, it's very different world. And back 20 years ago, nobody really cared about compliance. You know, there was compliance around, but it was mainly for financial people, legal people, that kind of thing in IT and, and business, you know, as long as you stuck to rules, you know, you were kind of okay. And then, yeah, you know, Sarbanes-Oxy came along because a particularly large American company thought they were above it all and yeah. were slapped down for it quite hard um and thus compliance was born in the form of socks and same exactly. with pci you know yeah um it's not just about tracking the risks but it's also tracking exactly. you know your compliance status at any one time and and again you can do that through manual means but right. it's a hell of a lot harder than if you're doing it through an actual solution that can do all of that for you and and it's it's a crazy, crazy time. You know, compliance is only getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We've just recently had a new version of PCI come out. You know, we're still looking at that. And that's a lot of our QSAs are still waiting for the reports on compliance to be generated by the Security Council so we can actually have a look at what we now need to report on. We've got the standard, but we haven't quite, I mean, unless it's come out in the last few hours, um, it's not come out with the final sort of version of the rock. But, you know, compliance does tend to get more complicated it doesn't tend to kind of get less complicated you know exactly. um that, GRC that's man like, that's the way to go for it I know it's well you're you're right on you know <clears throat> the one thing we can count on especially in, in compliance is that change is inevitable and there's going to be iterations and updated versions and we need to to just be mindful of that but to your point about multiple frameworks and duplic du really um additive work or duplicative work that's happening we don't have you know in today's age in a remote world we don't have often in it and infosec team resources to have teams of 20 30 40 everyone owning one piece of it the they there is such crossover in these control frameworks that yes to your point the grc platforms that help um, organizations to understand and we call it because we do this well at the with our risk cloud platform we call it assess once and satisfy many you want to be able to assess once and understand where you can satisfy across many frameworks. And even if you don't yet have to adhere to, let's say ISO 27001, or yet you don't have to adhere to NIST, 
but you know that you want to be able to inform the business who might be expanding into a new market or into a new product line. How far away are we? What's going to be the IT lift? What's going to be the engineering lift to get us there? Mm. And so doing that work, you know, in something like a risk cloud that allows you to assess one, satisfy many, and just see how close are we in the coverage there? And, and what do we need to do? What, what new controls would we need to implement? What kind of resources we, would we need to deploy to get there? And then it's, then it's our, CISOs at the executive table sharing, you know, strategic direction about, Hey, you know, Mrs. CRO, you might want to expand into this new region because it's great for sales and revenue. However, you know, this is where we are, or yes, I will help you get there before. And you should know that we're, we're 70% of the way there for an ISO cert, which will help you mm. open doors, you know, whatever it may be. So it just allows this conversation about, you know, strategic planning and all of that. And, and, um, and I think before it would happen in silos, right? The business might yeah. go off and say, we're expanding to APAC and then or we're going to Germany. And then the privacy team would say, whoa, 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 whoa. We're not prepared for that. We don't, you know, we need to refine our DPIA, whatever it might be. And so I think now we're seeing that, yeah, not only efficiency and work, redundant work being saved and, and efficiency gained in that, but also just having strategic conversations across functions um, about where they are, where they need to be and where they mm. are today. So yeah, that's great. And, 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 you know, another point you brought up, actually, um, third parties, you know, 20 years ago, everything was on premise. So you, you may have one or two third parties, you know, um, maybe you had a bit of a support contract for things like your servers and, you know, the various aspects of your data center or, you know, maybe occasionally people come in if you've got really bespoke software or whatever to, to come in and do work. Um, but it was a very different world back then. You, you, you know, you had very few, comparatively very few service providers. Now, with if everything's virtualized and everything's gone to the cloud, and now that cloud have it means you ha end up with a lot of third parties. You've got it for the ones providing you with the OS. You've got the ones providing it for the um, data storage areas. Uh, sometimes they're in the same. Sometimes they're not. Email support. You've got everything as a service now hr hr solutions as a service you've got grc tools as a service and you know all your suppliers are coming from diverse locations and dare i say it and i'll be a bit careful what i say here you know the world has had a quite a significant shift in the way that we're working recently because of of the conflict going on in certain parts of of you know the world um, that's all i'm going to say because youtube really doesn't like us talking about that um but um you know we're having to to look at these third parties and of course there's the age old you're only as secure as your weakest link and if your weakest link is your third party you need to know about it mm -hmm. and all that data has to go in somewhere and that may change your risk status and again if you're doing this manually trying to analyze say 30 third parties and actually see some correlation in that data yeah there's people out there that can do it but let's be brutally honest here it's much easier when you've got it in your tool and it can flag problems up say with iso or say with pci or you know you can say right what's what's our our maturity status across all of our third parties you know um compared to the standard that we purposely built to meet all of those requirements I've got customers who, you know, they're doing massive third party projects at the moment in ways that I've never seen in the past. You know, I've, I've, I've been involved in it a few times, but never on this, this type of scale. Um, and I think the, the working from home, as you mentioned before, the, pa you know, the pandemic, the, the move over to cloud based technology, the, the, all of this stuff has meant our, our, you know, our risk landscape and I keep talking about risk, we talk about GRC, but our risk, uh, you know, risk is, is kind of like the core part of all of this. It's, it's expanded and changed so differently from what it was 20 years ago. We're just not used to it. And, know. you know, checking out your third parties are actually doing what they say they're doing is another yeah. one. Yeah. Like, you know, one of the things I always recommend to, to, to customers, you know, when we're doing our security consultancy is have your right to audit in your contract. Because if they say they're doing awesome and they're doing everything, you know, it, it doesn't mean they are, you know, so spot check them from time to time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of compliance is going that way now, you know. Yes. Um, yeah. 
it's not just enough to ask for the badges. You've got to, you've got to, you know, check them and yeah. and make sure what they're providing to you is as secure as your posture needs to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, yeah, you talk about GRC, it's the governance, you know, you got the, the risk, obviously the mm. risk assessments and the regular kind of maintenance of that. You've got your compliance, which is inside and out, making sure we're consistent in the way we approach these things. And we're adhering to regulatory requirements and technology requirements and just our own policies, but also the governance. The governance is the thing that keeps it all together, right? How do we make sure that um, we're doing what we say we are doing and that we're governing, we're inspecting, we're auditing, we're mindful of the behaviors in our organization outside of our organization. organization. And so you said that, yeah. And I, I mean, kind of transitioning to a little bit more about from just the lens in which, you know, I'm closest to, which is obviously the logic at risk cloud. That's what we seek to do. We seek mm. to bring to the market a holistic GRC. So governance, risk and compliance platform that allows these different applications that speak to different needs or use cases, as you mentioned, supplier management, vendor management, supply, you know, third party risk all the way down to regulatory compliance, regulatory mm. change management, all the way to our good old PCI and our ISO readiness, audit readiness and our controls management. And so what we seek to do is we bring this all into one umbrella in the risk cloud, allowing these applications to be linked together. So ultimately, as we mentioned, it drives strategic decision-making and visibility and you know, great executive insight, you know, first line um, insight, but also all the way up to the third line um, and, and brings all of it together. And, and to your earlier point about even to the, even to the level of maturity of FAIR, now we have mm -hmm. FAIR embedded in our risk cloud. And so for folks that are on this journey and they've been on the journey for a long time, and now they really want to put that scenario modeling in place and put it in the terms of dollar and cents that fair embedded in the platform allows folks easily to do that. They've got the data and the scenarios from their risk side of the business. They've got their insights from their suppliers, and now they can run some scenarios on it and just see where they are, what are the loss events that they could expect, et cetera. So we just try to, to bring this all to life so that it isn't disparate point solutions that they have to plug in. Um, it is holistic and that can, can accomplish that wide spectrum of GRC. And I think the best thing that I love most about it, and of course, cause I'm a fan is that, you know, we're going to always face change. We're always going to face new and emerging to your point, compliance standards or requirements, whatever it may be ESG, you know, has emerged, um, mm. in, in a very topical way in the last couple of years. And how do we tie our social initiatives to the risks to the business? And how do we make sure there's social governance in place within our organizations? And so we at the risk Cloud are continue to iterate and bring to life applications that give folks a starting place, a workflow, a starting place to think about this, like, what does ESG mean to me? Where do I start? I don't know. But with the risk cloud, you can start to see there are some templates to get you started. It's a risk-based approach, or maybe it's understanding about the social impact that it has within the business. Um, and so that's what we hope to do is we just hope to iterate and, and meet our customers where they are. But then also, because it's a dynamic workflow tool, we have many customers um, that have bespoke processes that have been working for them for years, albeit emails back and forth and maybe on a spreadsheet that is unique to them. Maybe it's product compliance, maybe it's um, transfer impact assessments that they've started to do and they, they do it in a, in a way that the business is comfortable with and they like it, but they want to digitize it now. They want accountability, they want reminders and due dates and all that kind of mm. table stake stuff, but they want it in a system of record that also could speak to things like incidents that are happening or, or um, frameworks that they have adhere to. So that's what we seek to do here is we seek to to help to operationalize that. We believe that, you know, easy to use enterprise technology can actually change day-to-day um, -day, uh, work that's being done and also the trajectory of organizations. And we believe that because there's a lot of us, we talked about at the beginning of this session, there has been a lot of historical kind of difficult legacy, hard to use technology that people mm -hmm. just would rather go off and do that spreadsheet, you know? And what we find is, um, you know, it behooves us to have it connected. It behooves us to have it in a, a central place whereby it's linked together and you can make those strategic decisions knowing all vectors of data um, that might contribute to that decision. So, yeah. I've, I've definitely fallen in love with your tool. Um, you know, I've seen it a number of times. We've, we've helped implement it a number of times. 
Um, it, 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 just, it just makes everything so epically easier. And then we move into the big bugbear in the room for GRC, the price and the cost. Because 20 years ago, oh, oh you, yeah. you, you had to give your shirt, your arm, maybe half a leg, maybe your firstborn. Oh, yeah. It was it was horrendous the cost, oh, yeah. and I oh, think yeah. a lot of people, you know, CISOs and what have you, when they're trying to communicate the need for GRC tools, because let's face it, you know, when it comes to executives, they they want to know the cost of everything, and quite rightly too, you know. But um, part of, as as I kind of go back in a full circle to one thing I said earlier on, you know, uh, security budgets historically, right back in the early day, were very very low. You know, and it was you just couldn't get the GRC tool and do what else you wanted to, and needed to do within the business. But that's really changed. You know, okay, the virtualization side of it, and the fact that you don't have to have additional massive databases with with very heavy support costs um, associated with, have helped really bring the price down. And GRC really now is actually affordable at a reasonable rate. And you guys, you know what have you seen in the market historically and where do you sit now? Yeah, I think you're right on. I think for a long time, it was just cost prohibitive. People might've had a a vision and a need and interest to be more mature, but to your point, even your personal experience, you were at a large organization, um, an enterprise wide organization, but it's still just, you could not justify the expense. So now we're seeing that um, it's fractions of that original cost. It is 60, 70% savings of those, of those, you know, t- legacy players. And the reason is, as we look at that total cost of ownership, to your point, mm. the total cost of ownership of GRC platforms, legacy solutions that are old guard technology, there's a, you've got to have an in-house me, you've got to have IT in your pocket to help you, you know, set it up and maintain it, make code changes. You've got to have in on-prem, you know, infrastructure designed. Um, and you also just have to have you know, project managers to really like operationalize this and bring it to life. And so we're just seeing that without any of those barriers, you know, we're live with our customers within a couple of months time, delivering value Mm. back to the business. We're seeing that, you know, folks are saving um, and repurposing, you know, very critical FTEs or full-time employees to other more mission critical roles than just the admin management of chasing for risk surveys and things like that. Um, and so we're seeing that folks are saving costs, not only on, you know, total cost of ownership and infrastructure, but also just in repurposing the, the team on their talent to focus on the fun work, the fun aspect of, you know, uh, the GRC space and that coupled with just consolidating any, you know, point solutions that were doing ad hoc needs in their business, being able to, when a technology that was for one need only and one person used it only, and it lived within that one tool as that solution or that technology sunsets, you can actually bring that use case into life into the risk cloud because there's applications for that. So it is, it's, you know, it's capital savings, it's infrastructure savings, it's uh, and a better use of our team members' time and, and things like that is what we're seeing. And I think it's why our customers, whether it's Zurich to Google to, you know, a myriad of customers are seeing that, wow, this is a, this is a player to watch. You know, the risk mm-hmm. cloud is someone that, yes, we've been on the scene for seven years, but this is something that can meet the needs of the enterprise, but also serve all of us on the line that are maybe early in our journey. And we've got a, you know, 50 employees. We just got to document our policies. We just got to make sure we're aware of our vendors because we're growing quickly or we're preparing for another round of invest in, investment. And we need to make sure that we've got good understanding of our risk posture and our security posture. So no matter where we are on that spectrum, um, the risk club can meet you there and economically can meet you where you need to be. So yeah, we just try to make it really easy to use, easy to buy and use easy to get collaboration from your team members to get better insights. Well, I mean, this is the thing. And I think the, the great thing about GRC now is, you know, and again, it's kind of going back to one of my, my first points and, and a good point that you made as well, right back at the beginning. Um, it's no longer a massive multinationals who can afford this um i've got mid-sized companies who are starting to to really get to grips with it and use it and 
you know, finding it invaluable because everybody wants to compete. And when you're doing a lot of compliance, when you're when you're having to prove, because don't forget, you know, GRC tools aren't just for you to, you know, look at your third parties who service you. If you're a third party and you're servicing someone else, they're going to want to know data, you know, want to know information as well. And by, you know, providing them with information that you've you've got and showing them that you are doing GRC properly with tools and you're doing risk management and you understand all of that confidence builds oh. and and it can it can become quite a key selling point you know um especially if you're something like a law firm or you're a manufacturing firm or you know somebody who services the government you know in some kind of um software as a service you know it's the the applications for it to to provide that roi just by having it alone um, can be pretty significant we talk about that a lot with our with our team internally and with our customers we talk about you know we always want to make sure we're mindful of the positive business outcomes that they're trying to achieve and what they're, you know, what this technology investment, what are they hoping to, you know, what would the yield be for their business and what are the, the positive business outcomes they need to achieve and, and realize. And that is often one of them, which is mm -hmm. customer confidence, it's investor confidence, it's market confidence, you know, it's when your customer says, I need that sock, you know, that sock report, that pen test. You have it, you even have, you know, a process to say, hey, auditors, here's my documented policies. Everything is organized. It's real time. It's reflective of the business and, and where you are today. And yeah, that's a, that's a great point. That's among many other business outcomes that I think that customers are seeking to realize when they do make the step into GRC technology. I know that just general confidence and awareness is one of the, the critical ones they're hoping to yield. So. I'm honestly coming to the conclusion after this conversation that we should actually add a C to the end of GRC, an additional C for confidence, you know, GRCC, um, yeah, or just, cha go. just change compliance to, to confidence because that's really what it's, it's come down to. It is. Um, and that's really what it barrels down to. Um, but we have reached the end of our time, our allotted time together, unfortunately, and um, I mean, at closing words, is there anything you want to kind of sort of mention about Logic Gate? I know we, we've got a, a, a couple of ideas planned for, for the future events and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. But is there, is there a, you've, got, you've got your own sort of podcast that you guys do as well, haven't you? Yes, I would say, you know, for those listening to this, if this is your first time listening to this, check out the others in this series. James does an amazing job and has a really dynamic guests talking about all kinds of topics and themes in this, in our security space and in compliance space. So just, just, just uh, as a fan of yours, James, I would say it's meaningful and, and it's a great way to learn and expand your knowledge in this space. But, um, but yes, I do host a podcast called GRC and me. You can find it on Apple and Spotify, and it's just like this. We just talk shop about GRC trends and hot topics and things like that. Different ways to communicate with us are obviously down in the description. If you've got any questions on this, um, or if you've got any questions that you you know you want Megan to to have a look at and get back to you, then please get in you know get in touch with us, and we'll we'll be more than happy to do that. And if you want us to expand upon this with additional items, maybe we we you know dig down deep into GRC and maybe hit specific modules or go over stuff that that that, that is in interest to you, then let us know in the comments um yeah, please click subscribe press the bell get the notifications and go over to megan's blog and do the thang you know yes. click on click on the subscribe but uh, thank you megan ever so much for coming and being with us on this um as always it's a pleasure um thank you for all of you out there please look after yourselves and get in touch if you need us thank you ever so much and we'll speak to you all soon goodbye Bye.